Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's talk a little bit more about apologetics methods called evidentialist apologetics. And today I want to talk about one that is, in fact, fruitless. Blaise Pascal is a French philosopher, and he basically evaluates the risk that the atheist takes versus the risk that the Christian takes. Pascal's wager, as in the bet that you take, the wager that you make with your soul, is this. If the atheist turns out to be right, then he's led his entire life uh, and nothing really matters in the end. The Christian lives in the same universe, and when he dies, nothing really matters in the end. He's, he's not actually lost anything. But if the Christian is right, then the atheist loses everything and spends eternity in hell. And of course, the Christian being right in his own world would then have eternity in heaven. So he just says it's far more valuable to lead the Christian life. Even if you're an atheist, you ought to consider the gospel because it's more sensible to do so. Because what if the Christians are right? Now, there's other versions of Pascal's wager that will sometimes add on to them these accoutrements around the Christian life to say, like, the Christian benefits. The Christian has a solid marriage because, go figure, the biblical model for marriage works. The Christian pays his taxes and is debt-free a lot of the times. And, and, and the, the Christian's kids, like, obey him. It's bizarre. How does that work? Uh, the, the Christian has more joy in life. The Christian has fellowship. And the Christian has community and a sense of purpose and an aim. And there's a reason for everything that exists. And, and he, he has hope in the midst of trial and difficulty. So it tries to show the Christian life like it's this really opulent lifestyle, but that is also not the case biblically. In this life, you will have trouble, but take heart. God has overcome the world. When Pascal's wager is used, first of all, it doesn't actually prove God's existence. Rather, it sense, it places a sense of urgency on the skeptic's heart to consider the gospel. So it doesn't actually prove anything, but it does frame the discussion properly. Uh, when, Bla when Blaise Pascal's wager is used to try to paint the Christian life like it's some sort of luxury cruise, that could, that could, yield, uh, that could yield false converts. Right, so I would encourage you instead to consider drawing from the same passage that we read yesterday in, in, Hebrews, in Hebrews 11. We know that uh, these people received what God promised from a distance. Here's a Hebrews 11, 13. These all died in faith, although they had not received the things that they were promised, but they saw them from a distance, greeted them, and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. This is the fruit of faith. All right. Now, those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they were thinking about where they came from, they would have had an opportunity to return. But they now desire a better place, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. That's where your payoff is. That's where the luxury lies. That's where the opulence awaits. That's heaven above. That's where our faith actually is. We don't give our lives to Christ so that he gives us a nicer life now. You don't even give your life to Christ to try to make your marriage better. You don't give your life to Christ so your kids will obey. You don't give your life to Christ so that your financial life will suddenly fall into place. Like, no, you give your life to Christ because he's Lord and your faith is in heaven above. So Pascal's wager is, a, is useful for at least framing the discussion for the atheist, but it's not exclusive to Christianity and it doesn't actually prove God. So this is one, this is one other philosophical argument for God that is not always fruitful. I think it's helpful if you want to at least impress upon someone the risk that they take, but I recommend coming from this Hebrews 11 definition for faith, not the nuanced version of Pascal's wager that tries to paint the Christian life like it's some sort of luxury cruise. All right, you've got Pascal's wager, you've got irreducible complexity, you've got William Dembski's arguments from probability of God. There are all sorts of resources on uh, on evidentialist apologetics and philosophical proofs of God that you can draw from. Make sure that whatever resource you use, you end up with the gospel. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. And without faith, verse 6, it's impossible to please God. Make sure whatever route you take in apologetics, you arrive at the word. Are you ready? Go.